We've seen Japanese superstars rule baseball over the last few years. Some of the best players have come from Japan, and in 2017, it was the young star Shohei Otani. After winning two MVPs, he became known as the best player in MLB. This offseason, he hit free agency. Going into it, we knew that Otani was going to be breaking the bank. But it was a very unique situation. He had UCL surgery last year, so he won't be able to pitch until 2025. This alone made it a very unique situation. Will Shohei Otani be getting the contract that we all thought he would? Yeah, he did, safe to say, but at the same time, people were also saying, all right, well, he had Tommy John in 2017, so he has the injury history in total. We knew that he could hit at a high level, but could he stay healthy with all the pitching injuries? Would he be worth the $700 million that he was inevitably going to be getting? Well, it became a bidding war in free agency, and it was down between the Dodgers and the Toronto Blue Jays. Who has more money? And that was the biggest question that we had to ask ourselves. One morning, we woke up and we heard that he was on a flight and was traveling to Toronto to potentially even sign an MLB contract. And then we got a report saying that he is in Southern California with his dog and is not on any plane and has not made up his mind yet. Later on, he went and posted that he is signing with the LA Dodgers on Instagram. That was the biggest slap in the face to fans in Toronto, but if you were a Dodgers fan, you were happier than ever. The Dodgers haven't spent serious money in multiple off-seasons, and they've had the best attendance in MLB by a long shot. They were bound to make a big move, and that's exactly what they did when they signed Shohei. It was a very controversial deal, especially at first. He got 10 years and $700 million. The controversial part was the fact that he had deferred nearly all of his money. Now, what deferring a contract contract means is he's only going to be getting paid $2 million a year while he's actually on the Dodgers, but after his 10-year contract expires, he's going to be getting paid $68 million a year. What this means is the Dodgers don't have to pay Otani while he plays for them. They will be able to put a better team around Shohei while he plays, and that's the biggest thing. No matter the opinion that you had on it, this was a big move for LA, and it was also a very smart move. The biggest market in baseball continued to get bigger. The United States is very obviously far away from Japan. But the West Coast is the very closest, and getting Otani means that you also get Japanese fans to watch and travel from across the world. After landing Otani for 700 mil, the biggest question is what are the Dodgers going to be doing next? Yeah, they might have one of the best lineups in baseball. No, 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 not might. They do have the best. Truly, you can't get much better than three potential MVP candidates in one lineup. The pitching side of things, on the other hand, has been a mess. The Dodgers used to think of the rotation as a big strength, but it quickly turned into the biggest weakness. First of all, how did it actually become a weakness? Well, there's a few things that happened. They lost Julio Urias because he allegedly beat his wife, so that's one thing that LA had to deal with. Plus, they've been one of the most injury-ridden rotations in baseball. Clayton Kershaw, Walker Buehler, and Tony Gonsolin have all suffered big injuries. Literally, everybody has struggled and has gone through pitching injuries at least once in that rotation. But last year was when it was at its worst. The team still won 100 games, just proving that the Dodgers are unbelievable and are unstoppable in the regular season, but of course they got eliminated in the playoffs. So people were questioning, what is going to be happening with the rotation? We were hearing trade rumors regarding ace-level pitcher Tyler Glasnow, and there was a shot that he could be going to LA. December 14th, it became official, Tyler Glasnow became a Dodger. And this was the very beginning of the Dodgers pitching spree. This trade was really interesting because Glasnow was supposed to have an expiring deal at the end of 2024. But, you know, the Dodgers being the Dodgers, they said, okay, well, we'll get an extension done because why wouldn't we? They managed to lock him down for five seasons and paid him $136 million. For all we know, the Dodgers are going to be like the Padres and they will start opening loans to pay these guys off. I like the Glasnow trade, don't get me wrong, he's a great pitcher when he's on, but I'm not going to lie, I do have some concerns and worries about his health. If he could stay healthy, this is a great trade, and he will be able to eat up postseason innings for the Dodgers, but I guess that we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with Glasnow, but the second pitching move ended up being even bigger for the Dodgers. This was only the very beginning, because the next guy that they got was unbelievable. The only name that we keep hearing in MLB is Yoshinobu Yamamoto, blah, 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 blah. 
One of the best pitchers, if not the best pitcher, that we've seen come over from Japan. He's simply just so talented, and God only knows what he's going to be able to accomplish in MLB. In 2023, he pitched a 121 ERA and had 164 innings. This is a young pitcher with no case of injury history. It doesn't get much better than this for LA. He's won three MVPs in seven years. Last night, reports were coming out about him left and right. We heard that the two New York teams and that LA are the finalists for Yamamoto. Some reports were saying that he was going to be making his decision in the next 48 hours. Others were saying by the end of the night, he would be making that decision. And by the end of the night, he became an LA Dodger. Yet again, another record-breaking contract for the Dodgers, and this is the best offseason that literally any team could have possibly had. The Dodgers gave him $325 million over the course of 12 years. He's never actually thrown an MOV pitch, and he got that much money. Hey, if that's the case, you know, Dodgers, I used to play back in Little League, so want to go ahead and give me a call. Anyways, as I was saying, this is a very, very big contract. 325 mil is a lot, but that isn't the only thing that they're paying, because they also have to pay his former Japan team $50 million in fees. This is a lot of money to commit to a single player. He also managed to get two opt-outs in his contract. They say his camp was seeking two, and he got two opt-outs. As of right now, it is allegedly in year 5 and year 8, but we don't have official confirmation on that. He's such a young pitcher, and he has so much room to develop, plus he fits the Dodgers' agenda of losing playoff games, and these are his playoff stats, by the way. It's a joke, Dodgers fans. Just chill out, relax, it's okay. I look at him as the ace of the group and the ace of the future. He's by far the most reliable as far as the health factor goes. It's also pretty cool that he wanted to be a Dodger over anywhere else. Else. Aaron Boone, you know, the Yankees manager, he went on a whole thing saying that they had a Yamamoto jersey ready for him in the Bronx. The Mets owner, Steve Cohen, had a dinner with Yamamoto and offered him the same exact contract as the Dodgers did. It was his choice, and he chose LA. That's exactly what you want to see. They'll also likely be bringing back Clayton Kershaw, so the rotation will only grow stronger. Now, anytime anything happens in sports, there's always controversy. This Dodger situation is literally no different. This is a team that has won their division 10 times out of the last 11 years. You could say that they bought it all, but I would strongly disagree, man. They've done so, so much. And by the way, the one year that they didn't win the division, they were literally one game shy of winning it. The dominance that they've been able to do is absolutely awesome whether you hate them or love them. I'm not a Dodgers lover by any means, but what they have done is awesome. But many are currently questioning the future of what this sport is going to be looking like. Can a small market team actually contend with the best attendance in baseball? They are paying Otani, and they've spent $1 billion this offseason. The Dodgers have spent more than the other 29 teams literally combined this offseason. Could a team like the Colorado Rockies go and put out a team that's somehow better than the Dodgers? I just don't think that it's fair, but that's baseball. Some have suggested a salary floor and a salary cap. People say small markets aren't spending enough, and that big markets are spending too much. But as things currently stand, the Dodgers should be an example for every single big market team. If you are pulling fans to your games, you're getting merchandise, you got people investing into your team, go and put a damn winning product on the field. The Giants and the Red Sox have looked like fools over the last few seasons. They're some of the biggest markets in the entire sport, yet they have not been able to land any big free agents. It is a problem. Problem. Even if people actually view this as unfair for what LA is doing, the Dodgers ownership is very clearly committed to winning, and that's obvious. That's what you have to respect. I'm a Red Sox fan. Our ownership has shown to be awful. They just don't care anymore. The Dodgers ownership is how you operate as a big market. The future is now for this team. It isn't just their young Ace Yamamoto's on that team, by the way. They have other young pitchers who are only getting better. The 6'5 beast of an arm, Bobby Miller, he had a 376 ERA last year. It was a sick rookie year, and I expect this guy to only get better. They've been able to capitalize off of a lot of prospects, not just free agent signings. The other very controversial thing that's going on in LA news right now is what MLB personality Ben Verlander said. Well... This means everything. It's the most important signing in Dodgers history. I have no problem saying that. It's the most important. It's the biggest. I think it will be the most impactful. So first of all, he is Justin Verlander's brother. And to say he loves Otani may be a little bit of an understatement, but fair enough. I mean, the guy's an insane player. 
But it's another completely different thing to go out and say that Otani is the most important signing in Dodgers history. You know that number 42 guy? Jackie Robinson, the most important signing in Dodgers history? One of the greatest players to ever play baseball, but that's not even the most important part. Jackie had to live through a time in the 40s where African Americans were treated differently than anybody else. Not only was he the man to break baseball's color barrier, not only is he the most important player in sports history, but he impacted our society unlike any player in this sport ever has. I think everyone can agree with that and say that this was Ben Verlander's worst moment ever. But let's forget Ben for a second and just remember what LA just did. My personal opinion on it is, alright, look, we know that the Dodgers were going to be making big moves, but the fact that they actually managed to land both of those guys is just unbelievable. I think that they have a really nice future, but it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, and peace out.